My name is John Meyer. I'm a lifelong City Falls Church resident. Lived here on Greenwich Street for uh, 58 plus years at this point now in 2014. And several of us lifelong city residents have saved a lot of things over the years that are very special to Falls Church, very specific to the City of Falls Church. Um, these are things that are that are not documents, not photographs, but a uh, little bit bigger than can be donated to the library. And since we don't have a museum in, in the city, I uh, thought I'd share some of them with you and, and tell the story about them, how they came to uh, survive all these years and, and s still be here as a, a special piece of history of Falls Church. Well, they say one man's trash is another man's treasure. And uh, ironically enough, I've got a... Uh, lone surviving Falls Church trash bag. The city hall used to sell these to residents. I think it was a dollar fifty for fifty of them. Uh, didn't include the city logo, but it did say "Help Keep Falls Church Clean." So I've got a copy here to share with you. Uh, some of the other things the city used to issue uh, every, every year uh, were the car license plates before the stickers went on the windshield. You had a, a physical license plate that uh, you had to attach above your state plate and it, and it mirrored the, the color scheme of the, of the state plates. He was either black on white or white on black lettering and it altered every year. So I've got a, a sample here from 1959. Um, Similarly, for us kids, uh, the bicycles had to have a license, uh, a one-time license, and uh, now they give some sort of metal disc, but back in the day, they give actual license plates with numbers on them, uh, and looked a lot like uh, car plates, uh, white on black. So I've got a copy of that here. One other thing that's transportation related, a little bit bigger, um, salvaged a Route 7 directional sign. I think it came down from the intersection of Route 7 and Route 29. Uh, when they replaced it, they stored these signs at the property yard for a number of years, and then when they moved the property yard, uh, they needed to dispose of them, and I, I was able to salvage it, and it still sits on the post uh, that it was mounted at the intersection, uh, and Route 7 West, Route 7 East. Another uh, transportation route that traversed the city was the WNOD Railroad. Uh, I've got several spikes here that occasionally if you dig around a little bit, you can still find a spike or two along the bike trail, now, now the bike trail. Um, and oddly enough, I managed to salvage a piece of the, the rail itself. Uh, the railroad was, rails and ties were removed in 1969. But uh, along the pathway, uh, which is now the bike trail, uh, short pieces of the rail and, and a few ties here and there were just dumped off to the side and, and remain and became uh, halfway buried. And if, if you were alert enough to, to spot them, you could recover them. And this short section of rail, which weighs a couple hundred pounds, by the way, um, I did manage to salvage that along uh, the stretch in East Falls Church. And so that is, is part of our, our railroad history. And one of, the, one of the users of the railroad was uh, Snyder and Company Hardware. Uh, it was in East Falls Church. It was the, uh, uh, directly across from where the East Falls Church train station was. I've, I've got a, a, a watercolor of the train station here uh, to show you. But also Snyder and Company was, uh, had warehouses in the back that were loaded by railroad cars. They, they had railroad car doorways and they uh, offloaded their concrete bags, whatever supplies they got directly from the railroad. And I happen to have a yardstick from Snyder's and it, it has you know, all the products that they have. You know, it's typical advertising yardstick. Uh, it says East Falls Church, and one of the interesting things is it has the phone number and it has the exchange letters that we all used to use. Uh, in this case, Snyder's was JE21194. And one way you can tell if, if um, an old time Falls Church resident, if you ask them their phone number and they still say JE, 
JE2, JE3. That stood for Jefferson. So, so we were all used to just using um, seven digits for our phone number when we'd have to, to give someone our phone number. So that's just a, an aside there. Okay, one of, one of the very famous pieces of Falls Church history was actually a tree, the hangman's tree uh, that stood on West Broad Street, uh, basically where Virginia Avenue crossed. And it was rumored to have, have been used by Colonel John Mosby and the, and the Confederates to hang Union spies. Um, when the tree came down in 1968, a lot of a lot of residents were were very um, interested in in salvaging a piece of that, and and a lot of people got pieces of branches, parts of the trunk. I myself got a piece of the bark that I kept for all these years, and I actually turned it into a piece of the artwork, and using an image in the background uh, from uh, the historical commission. Uh, brochure on the legend of the hangman's tree. That's what I've used in the background of this. But that is a piece of the bark, and I've incorporated it in with a, just a piece of rope uh, to show the significance of it and make the rope look like tree roots. But, but that, that is a, a piece of that actual hangman's tree. Some of the businesses around Falls Church had some pretty uh, unique artwork and, and promotional materials too. We've got a couple key chains from some of the car dealerships. Uh, Falls Church Chrysler Plymouth, uh, which now exists as the cab company, wonderful Art Deco building. Uh, I think my father bought a, a Plymouth Valiant from there back in 1964, but they had their key chains, the promotional key chains uh, that they distributed along with a new car, if you bought one or a used car. And another car dealership uh, was at West Street and West Broad was Peacock Buick. And I have a an example of their keychain here. Um, they moved the dealership up to Tyson's Corner, but the, the Peacock Buick used car stayed in Falls Church for a number of years. To a kid growing up in Falls Church, uh, one of the favorite stores that we had for, for obtaining music and records was Giant Music, and they were uh, in the city since about 1959. Uh, they were on West Broad Street for a time, but then they moved in 1968 to 110 East Broad Street, and they also sold musical instruments. And they were, at one time, Northern Virginia's largest record store, and before the, before the malls and before the chains. And unfortunately, Giant Music uh, did go out of business rather quickly once the malls and the other record store chains came onto the scene and they only lasted till 1982. Well, when their, when their store on East Broad Street uh, became vacant and they started changing the, the space for, for leasing to another, um, the sign, the very colorful sign that they had been their, their trademark for about 15 years, it came down and I asked the owner of, of the building, Mr. Mr. Robertson, I asked him if I could recover the sign and he, he gave me permission. So I did save the sign. It's four feet by eight feet. It's, it's a plexiglass with color letters uh, embedded on it. Uh, what I have here is just a photograph of the sign that's, that's stored in my basement. After buying records at Giant Music, uh, the, many of the artists would, would come to play in the area and one of the venues that uh, offered concerts for teenagers and, and shows was the Falls Church Community Center, the Parks and Recreation Department. For about three or four years from 1969 up through about 1972, they about every few weeks they had uh, teen dances there and a lot of the up and coming local bands would play there in addition to some uh, known, very well known acts. Um, uh, I've looked for posters from these events and they're very hard to find. I searched on eBay and I came up with one from May of 1972 and it's uh, Bobby Whitlock who was a member of Derek and the Dominoes, played with Eric Clapton, and Brownsville Station. They were, they were a local favorite. They played the community center many, many times. And I've compiled a listing based on newspaper ads 
of all the bands that played there in those years. And it's a very interesting slice of the music scene uh, back in, in that era. Mostly hard rock bands, but uh, a very interesting slice of, of the music scene that, that many of the kids in Falls Church would, would go and, and see the bands for a couple bucks too. Tickets were only two, three dollars. And it was in the community center gym. Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of crowds there for, for certain bands. Uh, Iggy Pop played there in September of 1970. That was a legendary show. It uh, had, had a lot of excitement, a lot of action. It was a very huge crowd. So um, I, I wish there were more of these posters around that uh, could, could show some of, the, some of the history here, the musical history, but uh, at least we've got one to, to show and one to uh, uh, show our history. Falls Church does have a little bit of country music history as well. Uh, many people don't know that uh, Jimmy Dean used to live in East Falls Church, and when he was appearing on WMAL Channel 7, this is in the early 1950s, he had his own show, uh, Town and Country Time. It was uh, sponsored by uh, one of the local radio stations, and uh, Jimmy Dean and his Texas Wildcats would, would host the show every week. And he lived on Roosevelt Street over by the East Falls Church Metro, uh, what is now East Falls Church Metro. And uh, a couple of his band members were, were local too. Uh, here on Greenwich Street, one of his uh, band members, uh, James Carroll, uh, was a short-term member of the band, played with them occasionally. And Jimmy Dean would visit on Greenwich Street and they would I've heard that they would jam on the front porch of the Carroll's house and Roy Clark was another uh, a member for a very short time in, in Jimmy Dean's band. Uh, Roy lived up in Pimmet Hills for a short time and so he was rumored to have appeared in these jam sessions as well and one of the things to preserve that era of Jimmy Dean's history is some of the promotional photos that uh, WMAL gave away and when Jimmy Dean would have appearances or on his TV show the band members would autograph them and I've got a, an example here it's the same same photograph but it's autographed two different ways two different series of band members but um, it shows how how uh, reachable the artists were and and how they they did meet with their fans and and certainly wanted to give their fans a memory and uh, it's part of Falls Church history as well, and I've tried to preserve that, got a couple copies uh, of these autographed photos. Another legendary Falls Church business was the blacksmith shop, uh, Harmon's Blacksmith Shop. It was right next to the Falls Church, Episcopal Church, and it later became Mises Flower Shop, but uh, Mr. Harmon ran the blacksmith shop till the mid-1950s, and still when it was the flower shop you would occasionally find horseshoes around the building and um, I managed to recover one even when Mies's flower shop went out of business there were still some horseshoes around and I, I salvaged one and here's a sample of one of the horseshoes that Mr. Harmon worked with um, when people in Falls Church had horses. For all the kids in Falls Church, one of the fun places to go any time of year was the ice skating rink, the Village House ice skating rink. It was on Park Avenue and uh, North Washington Street, and it was a place that um, went, went uh, Friday nights. They always had uh, skating sessions, uh, lessons. And uh, I managed to pick up uh, this at a yard sale, but uh, it's one of the last surviving uh, ice skate uh, carrying bags for uh, for the village house with their logo on it and that was the logo uh, that was out front and uh, many many kids skated a lot of miles on that on that rink. The circus used to come to Falls Church too. A uh, couple vacant lots uh, that were around town were, were known for having the circus or carnivals. Uh, one of them was uh, what became the Falls Church Post Office on 400 block of West Broad Street. Uh, I remember going to that myself. 
another vacant lot was on Park Avenue and Pennsylvania Avenue uh, that was uh, the home to a few circuses and carnivals over the years also. Currently, we have the Fall Festival and the Falls Church Memorial Day Parade. And in the spirit of the circus coming to town, uh, some of the posters that they've developed t to advertise those events have a circus theme and you have the carnival rides. And one of the interesting things about those posters that go up around town is they come down and nobody saves a copy of them. But I did manage to save a couple of the most colorful ones. Uh, the fall festival was held in 1996 at George Mason High School. It was a, it was a very big two-day festival. It was, it was a lot of fun. And here's the poster from that. And uh, the Memorial Day Parade from 1999 had some carnival rides associated with it and a very colorful poster. Uh, that I saved as well, and here's a copy of that for our Falls Church history. This button is from a flea market that was held at the old brick house on West Broad Street from around 1969 to 1973. Every Saturday afternoon during the summer, they had flea markets out there, and each exhibitor had to wear this button. Uh, interesting thing is it has a drawing of the historic house that served as an antique store at the time that, that sponsored the flea market. And the building is still there, incorporated into uh, other business townhouses around it.